Hey everyone, Ryan here at Hands Down DFS, and welcome to another DraftKings Week 1 Breakdown video. Uh, if you didn't see our video yesterday, Scotty went through and broke down the matchups we have on this Week 1 slate, highlighted a few key stacks to uh, target, a few matchups to fade. Uh, we'll link that down in the description, go check it out. And also, we'll be coming out later this week with our full Week 1 DraftKings slate breakdown, so stay tuned for that. For today, we're going to be doing a first look at some of the players we have on this slate. I uh, went through a little bit before this, just browsed through the prices for the first time and took note of some of the guys that I uh, like their price of, some guys I don't. So we're just going to go through quickly all the positions and just kind of see what stands out upon first look. Uh, we'll start at the top with quarterbacks. Uh, again, if you didn't catch Scotty's video, he talked a lot about this Cardinals-Titans game and, you know, for good reason. It sh should be high scoring. You have Kyler Murray here at 7,600. If he starts off the season like he started off last season, I mean, he'll have the highest ceiling on the slate guaranteed. Uh, you know, he, he's throwing the ball 30 times a game, and on top of that, he brings you a safe floor as well as a high ceiling with his rushing upside. You know, towards the beginning of last season, you can see here he's rushing 13 times, 8 times, 5 times, 6 times, and, you know, for good yardage, like, you know, averaging over 8 yards a carry. Uh, it kind of tailed off towards the end of the season. I guess defense is kind of schemed and figured out how to contain him. But again, if I, I really like Kyler Murray, uh, I think he might be a little bit chalky here at 7,600, but I think he's got a huge upside. Uh, just going down one guy, Josh Allen. Uh, obviously, the Steelers have and always will have a great defense. Uh, TJ Watt looks like he's going to play today, and they also added Melvin Ingram over the offseason. So. Yeah, I mean, this defense was way too scary for me to play Josh Allen at 7,400 when you have Kyler Murray in what should be a really high-scoring game, you know, $200 more, or you could drop $400 and get Russell Wilson. So I'm going to – this Josh Allen price is uh, too high for me. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, I think, is a good play this week. I think he's got sneaky value for being 6,800. Obviously, you know, last year's MVP, 53 touchdowns, 6 interceptions. He's got – the best receiver in the league. I don't think there's really an argument to that. And Devontae Adams on this team who he can just, you know, throw the ball up to. And that, that that's why he's getting like four touchdowns a game basically last season. So I, I don't expect that to change at all this season. Uh, the Saints defense has kind of taken a step back. Uh, I don't think they're going to be as good as they were last season. And I don't expect Jameis to be protecting the ball like Drew Brees was. Uh, I mean, we know Jameis is can have 5,000-yard seasons, but can also throw 30 interceptions. So there's going to be a lot of, I think, a lot of possession for Green Bay. You know, even if he throws two interceptions, that's two more times Aaron Rodgers has a chance to throw a touchdown. Uh, you know, it, it also means potential for Aaron Jones at running back. We'll get to him later. But I, I think both of them are good prices. All right. The rest of these guys, they're kind of, their prices aren't too bad. I kind of agree with... Uh, Kind of agree with them. 6,500 for Ryan Tannehill. Again, high-scoring game. He's now got two big targets on his team. I think that's a good price. Uh, kind of more value play I like. Call me crazy, but Ryan Fitzpatrick here at... Where is he? Five 5,500 Ryan Fitzpatrick. Uh, the Chargers defense isn't bad, but, you know, Fitzpatrick is... Playing like he's on borrow time, and he, as we saw last year with the Dolphins, he just will heave the ball without a care in the world. Um, you know, it brings into brings interceptions into play. As you can see, here, he's he had some struggles with that, not as much as Jameis Winston, of course, but he struggled with that. But also, that means you get these three touchdown games. And uh, Washington's got a pretty decent wide receiver core as well as tight end. Uh, Curtis Samuel's questionable. Like, let, let's see if he's going to play. If he does, I think that's a really good. 1-2 receiver um, with Terry McLaurin. So I, I, I think Fitzpatrick has sneaky value there. Um, and this game is probably going to be very low-owned as well. It's, it doesn't have a high point total. And, it, you know, Fitzpatrick really allows you to, if, you know, if you're stacking him with a guy like Curtis Samuel or with Logan Thomas, it allows you to kind of double up on these expensive running backs that we're going to get to in a second. Uh, I also want to take a look at the rookies we have on this slate. Uh, starting off with 6,200 is Trevor Lawrence. Uh, he, he looked comfortable in the preseason. Obviously, it will be basically another preseason game with this Houston Texans team, who's basically a college football team at this point. They don't have anyone on their team that's kind of worth worrying about. 
uh, it, this game will go one of two ways. You know, Urban Meyer is going to either see what Trevor Lawrence can do and let him throw the ball even if they're up big, or you know they might get up a touchdown or two and they might try to protect him and run the ball more. And that's when we'll see James Robinson come into play. But at 6,200, uh, you know, it, choice is yours on Trevor Lawrence. I'm probably going to fade him. Uh, I, I still want to give him a week or two to see, you know, how he handles the pressure of being in the big leagues. So, but but I, I do see potential there, especially in week one where anything anything can happen. Uh, the next starter that we know for sure, Zach Wilson, 5,000 for the Jets. Uh, you know, the, the Jets are not a good team. Don't think they'll be a good team even with Zach Wilson. But I think out of the rookies, uh, out of the rookies on this slate, Zach Wilson's going to be my favorite. They they got decent receivers. They had a Corey Davis. Uh, Jamison Crowder last year had a really good season. He did battle with injuries, but he's a he's a good player. Uh, I I think Zach Wilson at five thousand. If you wanted to get really contrary, and you could go there. And then uh, the new Patriots quarterback Mac Jones here at forty four hundred. I mean, I'm, I'm fading him completely even at this price. The Dolphins' defense is too good. Uh, I say that as a Dolphins fan, but also they brought back, you know, they have one of the best secondaries in the league last year, and they brought back their two starting corners. They added a pass rusher in the first round. So I think Mac Jones is going to face a lot of pressure. It's going to be a tough challenge for his first game. On to running backs. Uh, these top four guys, McCaffrey through Kamara, you know, this is your tier one. You probably want at least one of these guys, and like we talked about, if you're getting Fitzpatrick, you might be able to squeeze in two, and that would give you a huge advantage. But just keep in mind, they're all going to be relatively high-owned. Uh, th- that's kind of how I'm going to play this this week. I-, I want one of these four guys. I'll just see where the ownership falls. Uh, matchup-wise, they're, I think Dalvin Cook has a slight advantage. Um, the Bengals allowed 5.1 yards per carry last season, so I'm kind of leaning that way right now. Uh, kind of coming down to Saquon Barkley. Uh, he's questionable, and that's kind of why I'm going to fade him this week. I, I think he, he's going to play. It looks like he's can see here he's gearing up to play week one. But, I mean, he started off the season slow, obviously got injured. I think they're going to kind of ease him back into, into his full workload. I, I don't expect him to get a full workload in week one. So I'm going to, I'm going to fade Barkley week one. A guy I do like is Nick Chubb, and Scotty talked about this in his video, but, you know, Cleveland's going to do anything they can to keep the ball out of Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs' hands. It's a potent offense. They strike quickly. I mean, the goal to beat the Chiefs is to get up early and then keep the ball away from Mahomes. And how are they going to do that? Well, they have probably the best one-two punch in the league in Nick Chubb and uh, Kareem Hunt. Forgot his name for a second. Uh, Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. I, I think Nick Chubb is going to be really good here. Uh, the Browns have one of the best offensive lines in the league, so I expect them to lean heavily on Chubb and Hunt here. Uh, next guy I want to talk about is DeAndre Swift. Uh, he, he's, he, he has the potential to be a top, I don't know, it's called a top eight running back. I think he's got a lot of talent, and we saw it last year. He has potential. He provides a very safe floor with these receptions. As you can see last year, obviously this was under got a new quarterback this year, but last year was targeted five, 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 five times a game basically. And you know, with throwing 50 yards on the ground. So he, he provides this really safe kind of you know 15 point floor. Uh, if you're playing cash, you can go there. I wouldn't go there this week. Uh, I think his price is too high, especially against the 49ers defense, who's again gonna be one of the best in the league, just like they were last year. So I don't like Swift this year or this week, but you know later on in the season, I think he's a really good cash gameplay. I think if his price falls to kind of like where it was mid last season in this low six thousand range, yeah, I think you can keep hammer him in every 50-50 you have, and that would be a good play. Uh, James Robinson at sixty four hundred, obviously he's going to be the recipient of Travis Etienne's injury, and we talked about with Trevor Lawrence, Houston uh, not very good. The Jags will get up big. And we'll see, are they going to keep throwing the ball? Let's see what Trevor Lawrence has to start the season on a, you know, probably the easiest game he'll face on the season. Or do you just keep handing it off to James Robinson, let him get his work? He was a breakout star last year. I mean, he started the season so hot. He continued it throughout the season. 
kind of fell off at the end here, but I, I, I really like James Robinson at 6,400. I think, I think he's going to be a great play, especially if this game blows out like I expect it to. And then just upon first look, Chris Carson here at 5,900 seemed pretty cheap. I mean, he, he doesn't get you the high ceiling that some of the other guys do. You see here, he, I mean, he averaged 15.2 points a game last season. But really when you're playing him, you're expecting a number like this 13.9. Uh, but I think just 5,900 is really cheap. And I think Seahawks, similar to the Jags, will get up pretty good. And I think he'll, he'll get a decent amount of work. Uh as far as value in this running back position, a couple guys I like are the guys on the Cardinals. Where are the guys on the Cardinals? So we got Chase Emmons here at 4,600, and we got James Conner at 4,500. $100 a piece, $100 separating them. Uh, I, third time mentioning this, but the Cardinals Titans game is going to be high scoring. I think it's going to be a shootout, I think it's going to be fast paced. Uh, just like every game Kyler Murray plays in. And, you know, when you've got guys like Julio Jones and A.J. Brown and Derrick Henry who can score in a matter of seconds, th this game is going to go back and forth. Uh, Connor's going to be your your safer, more volume-based play, but I think Chase Edmonds is, should be the running back one. Um, he showed some potential last year without Kenyon Drake uh, or when Kenyon Drake was out. I think he's got big play potential. Uh, he he, he kind of came in as a change of pace back and would you know catch the ball, had a, a couple long touchdowns. So I think I think Chase Edmonds I would lean if you want to target one of the running backs in this game. And again, they're both of them are so cheap that if you wanted to do stack like you know you add Chase Edmonds here, you throw in Tannehill at sixty five hundred, his best receiver, number one receiver, and AJ AJ Brown, and I, I think that leaves you with you know say you want one of the top running backs too you want tomorrow also that, that leaves you decent work to kind of plug in some mid-tier wide receivers and tight ends kind of pump the defense and you can build a really solid lineup with jay simons and he brings you the big play potential uh so let's just move on to wide receivers i mean we'll, we'll cover running backs more in detail in the full breakdown but this is just kind of a first look so we'll just move on uh, i mentioned aj brown i think he's he's too cheap here i know you know you see where he was last season at 7,600, 7,300, 76. And he, people are going to be scared of Julio Jones taking away from his production, which I, I'm sure it will happen a little, but you can't cover both of those guys. Uh, I don't know how you're going to be able to double team both of those guys. And I think A.J. Brown is but both of them, but especially A.J. Brown will kind of fall under the ownership that they should be at, considering how high scoring this game should be. So I, I really like A.J. Brown here. Uh, another couple guys I like, if we just jump down to the mid-range, are the 49ers receivers. Um, I I think this game, again, it, similar to the other ones we talked about, Detroit, not a good defense, not a good team this year. San Francisco will get up big. But, you know, you kind of want to feel out, is this going to be Garoppolo's team or Trey Lance's team? So, sure, Monster might have a touchdown and... Uh, you know, the running back I picked up in the draft will also get his fair share of work. Uh, it's Trey Sermon. There we go. Couldn't think of his name. Uh, but I, I think Ayuk and uh, Debo Samuel both have potential to catch a touchdown and get some yards. Because, I, I I mean, when a team's favored by however much they are, I think it was eight points. They scoring three touchdowns, according to Vegas. I've got to imagine two of them. What One of these guys is catching a touchdown. And, you know, I think two are going to the wide receiver slash Kittle, their, their main pass catchers. So I think between Ayuk and Debo Samuel and Kittle, you're getting two touchdowns. So I, I think either one of those guys are a good play at their price. Some more guys I think are way too cheap. Tyler Boyd, T. Higgins. Uh, Tyler Boyd's at 5,200 here. T. Higgins at 47. I think this is, this is really surprising to me. I think T. Higgins is the best receiver on this team. Jamar Chase has not proved himself yet in the preseason, has had a lot of drops. Um, he's going to start wide receiver three. I, I mean, I, I thought coming into the season it would be T. Higgins, wide receiver one, boy two, Chase three. I don't know why Higgins is the third price guy on here. Um, I, I, I couldn't tell you, but I, I think, you know, Burrow throws the ball a lot. Even when Joe Mixon was healthy last year, Joe Burrow was throwing the ball like 30 to 40 times a game, closer to 40 than 30, that is. So, 
I, I think you can't go wrong with T. Higgins or Tyler Boyd. I, yeah, I think they're going to get a lot of work. Uh, we talked about Trevor Lawrence, so I'll bring up some of the Jags guys. LaVisca Chenault, what is he priced at? Fit 5000 I, I think he takes over as the wide receiver one this year. DJ Chark had a good year last year, but LaVisca Chenault's their, their young guy. Uh, I mean, you can see towards the end of last season they, where he had tons of targets, and that's kind of who Lawrence has been favoring in the preseason. I know it's just preseason, but if if this game goes the game script where Jacksonville gets a big, let's see what Trevor Lawrence can do and have him throw some passes downfield, see what his arm's made of. I think Chanel is going to be the, the recipient of those. He's the big play guy in that team. So I, I like Chanel here. Uh, and then uh, Scotty mentioned him in his video, so I'll mention him as well. Michael Pittman Jr. at 4100 This is way too cheap for a guy who, regardless of T.Y. Hilton's health, should be the number one wide receiver on this team. I mean, he was a rookie last year, and he, he had a couple games where he kind of popped off. You see 101 yards here. He, he had a another big game, uh, 66 and a touchdown here. So I, I think he has the potential to you know, be the big receiver on that team. And then, you know, T.Y. Hilton is starting starting the uh, year on the bench, injured, not being benched, but he's starting the year injured. So Pittman's the wide receiver one for this game against a Seattle team who will go up fairly quickly. Indy will be playing from behind most of the game, I would think. So I, I think there's going to be a lot of, a lot of uh, passing going around on this team. And I think Pittman is going to benefit from that of course uh tight ends of course kelsey's up here 8300 i mean I, I think this is too high though uh he went up to 8500 once but this is way higher than he's been at all last season i know like i don't think the loss of sammy Watkins should impact him that much i don't think he's going to see like a huge you know four more targets a game because they don't have sammy Watkins. that's not going to happen I mean, Sammy Watkins was injured, like, every single game last year, so it didn't happen last year. And, of course, he you know, he has that 30-point ceiling, that 40-point ceiling, but you're paying a big, big price tag for him. Uh, I think there's better ways to go, especially when we talk about Cleveland trying to keep the ball out of Mahomes' hands. Uh, Hawkinson and Swift are kind of the only two guys on Detroit that are saving face for them right now as an NFL franchise, you know, giving the Detroit Lions fans hopes that maybe there's a – playoff win in their future i don't know i don't know what they're hoping for right now but hawkinson's a talented tight end uh i they've got terrible wide receivers on this team i you, you know you look at the depth chart and th these guys that you've never even heard of unless you're you know you played dfs last year and you were looking for a three thousand guy just to fill a spot like quintez cephas i think he might be their number one receiver i don't it, it's just an atrocious wide receiver core so Hawkinson, I think, is a safe play. I think he's got a good price right now, forty nine hundred. Uh, you, you see, he's it, it's like cheaper than he was last year, and he's going to be, you know, now he doesn't have Galladay to compete with. He's going against tough defense, but again, I think he's one of the only guys on the team that they're going to be able to pass the ball to reliably. So I like Hawkinson. Uh, just going down the list, Hunter Henry, forty seven hundred seems way too expensive for a guy who's going to, you know, they're going to run dual tight end sets with John New Smith. Uh, do we know what Mac Jones is kind of – What? how are they going to scheme him? Is he going to be a guy that throws to tight ends a lot? I would assume so when they brought in two, you know, pretty elite tight ends. Uh, but for 4700 I think that's a bit too pricey, so I'm going to fade him. And then last guy I want to talk about is Kyle Pitts. A lot of people high on him. Uh, I don't like him season long. I think he's way overvalued in the season long fantasy league. Uh, especially with Calvin Ridley there, but at 4,400, he's such an athletic guy. Uh, you know, th this we, we know the Falcons love to pass the ball. Matt Ryan can heave it deep, and I think Kyle Pitts will really benefit from that. He's basically, you know, he he's basically can play out opposite of Calvin Ridley as a wide receiver. He's big, he's fast, he's got great hands. So I think at 4,400, I I'm probably going to take a chance on him. Uh, but once his, you know, once he has a big game, because he will, he's a talented guy. He'll have a big game. His price will go up to, you know, this high four thousand, five thousand range, and that's when I'll start fading him. Uh, but for now, I, I think we can take a chance on him. Defense, 
it's defense just fill in the blank there you know don't choose bad defenses against good teams it's as simple as that uh that'll about wrap it up for this kind of first look at the players video um so later on this week we'll, we'll have a video out breaking down the slate and full going into much more detail in every position and a lot of the guys we like building a lineup talking about stacks doing the the whole nine yards so stay tuned for that but thank you guys for sticking with me thank you guys for watching and uh see you guys in the next video